Oh, it was about people training. So you have a very clear answer for the owners. So when you give instructions, they're absolutely clear and the owner can't screw up. So you can't say things like, um, as vague as, we're going to control his behavior. It's like, and so? You can't say things as vague as, then put him in the crate. It will inhibit him. He will not soil the crate because he doesn't want to soil his sleeping area. They will totally screw up. Now put the dog in and leave it there for 12 hours. But what you've got to tell them is right at the beginning is why we're using the crate. And it's like this. House, house training is simple if you know when the dog wants to go. The crate allows you to predict exactly when it wants to go. If when you're at home you keep the dog in the crate and every hour on the hour you say, let's go pee and poop, you let him out, you run to the toilet. You got it? Yeah. So when you're giving information, a really good um, learning exercise is write it down and read it through and then exchange it and see if you can screw up with that information. You got it? So the danger in dog training is, and it's whether you're a trainer or a breeder or a vet, that you have this reservoir of knowledge. And your assumption is they have it too. Or you have common sense and your assumption is they have it too. Okay? They usually don't. And so your instructions need to be given absolutely precisely in words that a child of five can understand. So write it down. Now, when you've got it written down, see that's what I'm doing in my new blog. I'm writing down the instructions. Now each blog has two parts because I write them late at night, um, uh, starting about 2 a.m. with a bottle of wine. And you can see the instruction part of it. It's very clear. Then halfway through the blog, you realize, you know, he's drunk half that bottle now <laughs> and it gets to be really funny. Okay? So back to now, you moved. Why'd you move? Oh, well, you should be behind it. I'll keep dodging around. So, um, are you going to take that home? Hi, John. How you doing, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the only other thing in here is a water supply and a chew toy stuffed with food. So the best chew toys are Kongs to stuff with kibble that you soaked in water till it turns to mush and you stuff in the Kong. Don't have to totally stuff them. So I like to have at least six Kongs per dog in training. And you just stuff a bit in the bottom. Now the little hole always I stuff with the, the uh, a dry bit of kibble that I just lick and dip in the liver powder and stick it in there. Because they can't get it out. It's really annoying to them. You know, they can see it and they can smell it, they can talk to it, but they can't get it out. But when you come home, you can. You say, give me your Kong. And you just go, Doop, and it drops out. Because it's the only bit left after the end of the day. So Kongs are best for stuffing with kibble you soak in food. You put it in a little bit in the bottom, and then you freeze them, Kongsicles. Squirrel dudes, because of the kibble meter, and sadly we can't get any more of these. It's like the company is trying to go, I don't know what it is. Don't you think you have products you want to sell them? But could we get squirrel dudes for this seminar? No. The kibble meter. So you trim these little fingers down, and so you see, here you put your finger in. Feel it? Yeah. So you trim it down so the kibble can just drop out. Then you fill this with dry kibble. Uh, the biscuit balls I use for people who want to feed raw diet. I usually tell anyone in training, if you want to train your dog quickly, whether he's reactive to other dogs or doesn't like men or children or he has no recall or he's wrecking your house, then change what you feed from raw diet to kibble just during the training process. It's so much easier because the kibble, there's lots of little bits of it. And each bit of kibble can be used as a lure and a reward in training. 